Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. Today we're gonna take a look into Sony RX100 Mark VI. So let's uh, dive into it. So what is it? It's the whole idea started with the simple fact that DSLRs are big and cumbersome. So all they wanted to do is create a pocket camera that can kill a APS-C size DSLR. Basically this sensor. Not this. You cannot topple this. The surface area gap between this and this is not acceptable. So they always wanted to target APS-C. They, they were not targeting this. So DSLR killers, yes, they were aiming for APS-C. So what was the point? Point was to create a simple, elegant solution for people who buy cheap DSLRs. And uh, it's supposed to have pro features. Like uh, even a basic photographer and a basic camera can yield good results if the camera allows all of the manual settings, which you can notice uh, many cameras flat out don't give you manual controls. So it was a very good start. It had a good lens with a very large aperture. That was its selling point. Like there were cameras uh, that were doing like, you know, pro, 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 but they were very uh, dark lens basically, uh, slower uh, lens. And uh, it worked very hard to make sure they give full manual control of as many settings as they can. Full uh, aperture mode, full uh, shutter, aperture, ISO, everything, including focus. Uh, although it was electronically coupled. So basically you rotated this ring and it sent the signal to the motor that did the focusing. It was not perfect, but gets the job done. So it was a very good start. But it did had some very, very odd issues. First issue was, it, it is the only camera that I know that freaking really overheated this badly. And Sony is the only one that is known for this. It's like, you know, overheating is only Sony issue. And as you can see, internal temperature high, allow it to cool. It simply would seize up. Low battery life, which was kind of uh, odd, given that fact the camera was small, but still had very terrible battery life. It didn't have proper bulb mode. Basically, uh, you couldn't connect a remote and uh, open it for long exposure photography and limited to no time-lapse uh, settings. So, you have to understand, they were releasing this camera once a year. So, what we are going to talk about is uh, Mark VI. So, in 2012, they released it. For some reason, they decided they didn't have to add uh, touchscreen. Everybody begged for that. And now, in... 2018 they are giving touchscreen so suffice to say they were releasing a camera almost every year 12 13 14 15 16 and in 17 they didn't release in 2017 they didn't release anything i do not know why but and in 2018 we got a camera with finally touchscreen so, so this is the reason why i made this video so it's a camera and the selling point is it has a touchscreen. Now, why is touchscreen so important? Here's the deal. If you are using this camera, you want a quick and easy way to take a photograph. While manual controls allow you much more tactile feel of it, but touchscreen is much more faster. That's why you can just pull out your cam mobile and take a photo. However, be mindful the lens is f8 to f12, not f2.8 to f4.5. Uh, they are forgetting to, not forgetting, they are just ignoring that they have to multiply the crop factor with the aperture. So it's not very bright, so don't get carried away, like you know, it's a very very bright lens, no it's not. However, um, I'm really not happy with this, so it's idiotically overpriced. It's like $1200 for a pocket cam is just not acceptable, it's way too high and for at that point, they still lack some very, very necessary features. Like one of the selling point of this camera is like 24 frame per second. Awesome, cool, yes to deal. See anybody who took that, like let's say you were at a sports event, you took the photo, here's deal, you have to wait 30 seconds for buffer to clear. Why? Because they are using U UHS-1 card, this normal card. UHS-2 card is needed if you have to have a fast memory because this can only go up to 100 this can easily go up to 3 to 400 and you can easily buy to 200 300 and, you and uh, they said it's a vlogger camera and yet it does not have a mic input so i was really not happy with this like i almost uh, always recommended this camera over dslr to all my friends but now especially with mark 6 i'm like no i cannot recommend this now i will uh, show you my other reasons also 
now there is much better competitions nowadays phone cameras have reached a level that uh, flat out when 2012 came around there was no competition now at the wide angle basically if you are not zoomed in you will find your uh, cheaper sub thousand dollar mobile phone can outperform this how the heck that happened even though it has bigger sensor uh, mobile cameras go through much more rigorous uh, camera updates much more regularly they are getting updated uh, even software firmware and nowadays heck they have artificial intelligence doing the touch up so yeah it's not happening and uh, they also come with better features like uh, i hope this is wrong information but sony rx100 mark 6 does not have 4K 60 frame per second which is available in an iPhone and a uh, lot of Samsung and LG almost every flagship has it so only at telephoto and you are getting uh, what you paid for $1200 and it's not even waterproof so you can get a very high quality functional camera that can almost compete with it and uh, is waterproof and you have to understand uh, i've never seen sony rx100 to uh, properly compare to other offerings now there are these two offerings there are many more there are many more cameras that come with 1 inch sensor and uh, all of them have their you know pros and cons every does but however sony one sony rx100 is the most expensive one like this one i liked uh, i almost bought it it just it, it also had didn't had the bulb mode however it was much cheaper uh, so uh, panasonic lumia tz200 fancy names and uh, it also has one inch sensor this uh, canon one also has, although this has mic input so suffice to say please before you just jump into it like okay sony is a blogging camera you might find this camera to be much more uh, accommodating and uh, canon's image quality is unrivaled like that's why they are still around their image quality is unrivaled so that was my presentation hope you guys liked it thank you for watching i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like or if you didn't dislike leave a comment please uh, subscribe press the bell icon i upload video every day thanks for watching